So, you have finally made it to Mars. Congratulations. The views are amazing, the real estate is cheap, and the neighbors are quiet, mostly because there aren't many. But there's one tiny problem. You have no electricity. Without electricity, it is needless to say that you would be bored to death if not for the lack of oxygen, light, or heat. But since you are lucky and tuned into this video, you might be able to power your home on Mars. Before we begin, let's try to understand why we can't have the same energy sources on Mars as on Earth. Simple, because Mars is the resource-poor cranky sibling, not to mention cold and distant too. No, this is not a biased opinion of the inhabitants of Earth, we have all the reasons to say so. Firstly, nothing works on Mars. Wind energy? No, because the air is too thin. Next, solar energy? Not really, because the sun is so far away, which means the sunlight will be weaker and the dust storms can block it for weeks. Fossil fuels are out of the question because there were no dinosaurs. And if by any chance you end up on Mars, lucky you, you can be the hero and become future fossils for your great-great-grandchildren. Geothermal energy would not help either, since Mars is geologically inactive and there would not be enough heat to tap into. Hydropower is impossible on a planet drier than the Sahara. Nuclear energy could work only if you bring your own uranium because Mars does not have the right conditions to produce uranium naturally. As for a merger? No, thank you, it does not even work on Earth. Now that we have ruled out all the possible energy sources, you might be second guessing that move to Mars. Who wants to live in a place that's not only resource poor, but also an absolute energy wasteland? But hold on to your space helmets and don't lose hope just yet. There is in fact one unusual and somewhat destructive option to produce energy on Mars. It is a little risky, but it works. And the fun part is that you will have to be willing to destroy a moon to get it. Simple, right? This might sound a little dramatic, however it is actually an inevitable phenomenon. Mars's moon, Phobos, is already on a death spiral, and whether you interfere or not, it is bound to have a catastrophic end. Unlike Earth's moon, which orbits slower than the Earth and drifts away, Phobos orbits faster than the planet rotates. This tidal force drags Phobos even closer to the planet, paving the way for a collision. Yet before its sad demise, Phobos harbors an untapped reserve of kinetic energy. And honestly, if a moon is already set for its demise, why not put it to good use? Earth's moon is 7 million times more massive than Phobos, making it seem like a small player in comparison. However, don't be fooled, Phobos is far from being just a tiny asteroid. In fact, despite its relatively small size, it is still remarkably large by human standards. Its mass combined with its high orbital speed gives it a huge amount of kinetic energy, which can be exploited by us humans. Attaching a tether to Phobos has been proposed before for more efficient transportation between Mars and outer space. The idea is to use its position and orbital energy to aid in the movement of cargo. One end of the tether would also act as a hook to pick up cargo leaving the Martian surface. This type of tether can be used to extract energy directly from Phobos. If a 5820 km line is attached to the Mars-facing side of Phobos, its end will dangle in the Martian atmosphere at a speed of 530 meters per second. On Earth, that is about 1.5 times the speed of sound, but because the atmosphere of Mars consists mainly of carbon dioxide, sound travels much slower there, and 530 meters per second amounts to 2.3 times the speed of sound on Mars. As we mentioned earlier, Martian air is too thin and far too slow that it wouldn't even turn the blade of a wind turbine. However, at the end of the tether, the air would be blowing at Mach 2.3, which changes everything. At such speed, a turbine attached to the tether's end could generate 150 kilowatts per square meter. A single 20 meter turbine could potentially produce 50 megawatts, which would be enough to power an entire city. Though wind turbines on Earth are not typically designed for supersonic speeds, some special ones are used in supersonic aircraft. These turbines are streamlined and designed to generate power from such fast-moving air. So, if you plan on installing turbines on Mars, yours should resemble the streamlined version. As the moon spirals inward, you can add more turbines to generate more energy and accelerate Phobos's descent. Apart from this, you will also have to consider another thing. As Phobos gets closer, the line must be shortened to prevent it from hitting the ground. 
Fortunately, a shorter line does not need to be as thick to support its weight, so over time you can add more turbines without needing more material. The energy generated from Phobos could sustain a human population equivalent to the United States for 3,000 years. So you can most definitely bring some friends with you as well. However, this little endeavor demands enormous infrastructure. You will need thousands of tons of tether material to support the turbines. The better material you use, the more efficient your system will be. Apart from the material, the performance of the system depends on the design of the turbine as well. The energy yield is estimated to be 2 watts per kilogram of tether. Compared to plutonium, which produces hundreds of watts of heat per kilogram, these turbines can be a little inefficient. But they can provide energy over a longer period, making it a viable option. The technical hurdles do not end here. You need to set up another system to transfer energy from the turbine to your Martian home. This can be done via microwave power, rechargeable batteries, or some other method. But this will also introduce some loss in the energy. After setting up a whole turbine system and installing an energy transfer system, you might think that you are sorted for the rest of your life. However, there is still one more risk. As Phobos gets closer, the tidal forces may cause it to break apart, forming a ring of debris around Mars. To prevent this, you may need to use a supernet to hold Phobos together or break Phobos into smaller chunks that will be easier to manage. As you use the tether, Phobos will gradually descend and speed up, generating more energy. Over the course of thousands of years, the line will deliver a massive amount of energy. But like all good things, your limitless supply of energy will also eventually come to an end. At the end of the Cretaceous period, a rock collided with Earth, and that collision ended the reign of dinosaurs on Earth. Coincidentally so, Phobos is similar to the size of that rock, and if it collided with Mars, the impact will release 4 times 10 to the 17th joules of energy, and the explosion will be similar to the one in the Cretaceous period. Although there wouldn't be any dinosaurs to wipe, you will have to face the catastrophe. And your precious energy production system, it will also be burned to the ground. The result will be a long scar across Mars, and the collision will scatter a huge amount of debris in space. It might also cause a rain of molten rock, which will potentially create conditions for liquid water to exist on the Martian surface for a time. In the end, you might believe that you have cracked the code to living on a planet free of traffic noises, pollution and noisy neighbors, but don't pack your bags just yet. While tethered turbines may hold the promise of clean energy for centuries, they come at a very heavy cost. An unavoidable catastrophe. Eventually, poor Mars will have to pay the price of our hunger for energy. As is so often the case, the greatest power comes with the gravest consequences. But hey, at least your Martian home will be nice and warm until it is vaporized in the end. That was all for today's video. If you have any more unhinged questions, you can leave them in the comments below. And who knows, you might even get featured in our next video. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and share. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next one.